Welcome to Progressive Alternative with Victor Monharis. I'm Victor Monharis. And um, basically, it's about the presidential primary in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. This was their 10th of this whole uh, primary cycle. And they're um, basically their last one before this major stretch of primaries and caucuses. Yes, there are still caucuses that still happen around the country. I believe Minnesota and um, Colorado has something similar to that system uh, still uh, going on through for their presidential uh, primary. At least the Democratic primary. Uh, Basically, this was their basically so old. My, that's why they were basically being so intense. Every candidate there was either having to speak over everyone else or having to go over the time limit. And my goodness, the moderators were not able to really hold them. Uh, What do we start with? This was only a two hour debate. This should have been three uh, with everything that was on the line, basically. And uh, basically what we start with is uh, Nora O'Donnell, Margaret Brennan, Major Gar- uh, Garrett, Bill Whitter, and Gail King uh, moderating the event. It was basically the only two, the two females, Nora and Gail, were the only ones basically moderating the debate, at least majority. And it would have helped having another one with them, especially to enforce the rules on everyone else, basically asking everyone about... Uh, the simple questions um, that basically they had in their foresight. They didn't exactly have any local reporters from the last one. I was so looking forward to CBS uh, doing this uh, debate because I've looked at their works. They're very uh, comprehensible and just uh, quite well adequated to really handle the pressures and much, much more delinquency of basically being, I guess, in lack of better words, fair and balanced about these questions. But they, but when it came to the amount of time and the pressures, each and every one of these candidates, except for Tulsi, who's the uh, only major uh, candidate running in the race, uh, in this presidential race, uh, it was quite pivotal for them to be as quite fierce and aggressive as they could be. And Unfortunately, uh, this basically in a high pressure uh, situation and very fast pace as they wanted to make themselves, this was quite a failure for them, for CBS to try to adapt to that. Uh, Plain and simple, they were able to really, all the presidential candidates were just fierce. It was this moment of situation to for them to just keep uh, answering their questions as best they could and trying to contradict why they they shouldn't be the nominee, why they have to take on Trump, and basically why they could be basically them alone could do it. Uh, so uh, basically, especially Bloomsburg, uh, we'll basically start off with him. It's like he was able to improve. Again, you can only go up from here. At least, somehow. I don't know. Because then he had that slippage about almost saying, I bought those seats. He was almost about to say, I bought it. Uh, from the elections I bought. And it's like, oh, oh, uh, helped out. It's like, uh, someone's trying to get into his ego. Yeah, probably shouldn't uh, be saying that as a billionaire. And yeah, um, there, luckily there were uh, there were some congressional representatives, especially uh, those of the squad, Ilan Omar, Alexandria Casquel Cortez, uh, basically uh, mentioning that they were not bought by Michael Bloomsburg. They don't want that. They want to represent the people. Maybe instead focus on on organizations such as Moms Man Actions or Every Town uh, to just take on the situation of. Uh, gun-related incidents, and they did talk about that a lot more, much more than uh, basically uh, what they talked about in the uh, previous uh, debate. And I guess I would have to really mostly blame the moderators on that one as well, uh, from the previous debate 
on this current debate, they really try to make that up, especially because there was that shooting incident that happened in uh, nearby Charleston, where uh, Dylan Roof, the uh, basically white dude that apparently killed up uh, uh, so many people in that church, yet when the police confronted him, they were kind of like calming him down and just like, oh yeah, we'll give you a milkshake and stuff like that and we'll take you in. Hmm, I wonder how that would have gone like if he was any other race. Anyway, white supremacy, people not being so plain and so scared of white supremacy more than they uh, are with being labeled as democratic socialism. Oh, because that's the scary uh, label. Anyway, Michael Bloomsburg tries to make attacks, couldn't really handle most of Elizabeth Warren's uh, still asking that he continues to improve and continues to improve. And he's saying, oh, yeah, enough is enough. It's like, I don't want to do any more. And he's like, what do you want more from me? Hmm, kind of seems like an attitude from someone who's obviously misbehaved in the office. And so... Um, much more, but especially trying to accuse Bernie of being helped by the Russian government because the Russian government is trying to help out both Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump with their elections. Now, they're not necessarily saying, oh, yeah, vote for this person, but they're basically trying to depress people from voting at all. That's basically the signifying uh, goal from the Russian government. And I say go Russian government because I know there are amazing people in Russia that want to live their best lives out there. Unfortunately, their government sucks. Kind of like in Saudi Arabia, which Bernie basically mentioned uh, in that whole uh, debate, uh, especially them trying to say, oh, but you love uh, dictatorships and uh, authorita authoritarianism. And I can't say that word right. Look at me doing English well. Anyway, so, and they're basically trying to uh, pin him down, saying that he adores these uh, dictatorships. And it's like, but Bernie basically saying there are some good things from it. But of course, you have to tell them that you cannot do that. We have to work all together to do it justifiably. You can't just uh, go in there and just overthrow a leader uh, just because you don't like them or how they do things. You have to get everyone involved. You have to get their people involved. Otherwise, you go into the same cycle of, uh, of them believing in that leader that's just going to make things worse. And it's just downright not effective. We tried that before. Um, it's about being a diplomatic um, actions of everyone's in agreement. We have to take this guy or girl who's doing the authoritarianism in uh, that they're breaking uh, uh, world actions. And of course, that's also what Bernie also said about Israel and the whole um, net who not uh, the whole Israel Palestinian situation. This right here about uh, that. Yes. I want to help out the Israeli government, or at least the people of the Israel. But if their government is only going to be focused on depressing the Palestinians' voices, there, they have uh, that is nothing. We that is something we cannot uh, ignore. That we have to handle that. Um, and it, you know, again, diplomatic relations is much more better improved. Amy Kobachar, she was kind of just iffy there, just really always um, lining about, oh yeah, I can attract those uh, people who voted for Trump, and uh, never really having a sense of uh, bewilderment or imagination to become much more better. Just really relaying on the aspects that, oh yeah, I'm problematic, progressive, and just really not handling her well wishes very well with the racial communities. Really more focusing on just trying to say, oh yeah, I convicted someone without having to do the full and fair process uh, for people who are accused and basically not able to really uh, improve relations on those. The real relation will be, of course, whether she can still keep going to races and kind of why she only wants to go to Midwestern states. Look at the demographic. It's kind of always a little bit more friendly to her, which she most likely will not uh, perform very well in South Carolina. The biggest one that did actually uh, improve on that stage was Tom Steyer. He was, even though he only got seven minutes, according to National Public Radio uh, counting of 
basically how much words and how much time they had. Only seven minutes, and he made a lot of impact. He definitely basically talked about reparations that are needed uh, and basically uh, improving race relations. Buttigieg uh, put it up at first, but never was able to really say, he was sorry. He's going to make these changes, and he's going to make uh, take full accountability. Not like Bernie did when he basically talked about how his uh, votes about uh, gun manufacturers or gun uh, uh, violence was basically uh, had a backlash, and he's basically willing to uh, owned up to that. And keep on improving. He did have kind of a unstable line about, oh yeah, it'll only get worse from there. But basically, meaning about how you know he has a D minus from the NRA, and that it'll only get worse. You know, probably get to an F from that organization because that group has clearly lost their way about just properly instructing people how to properly use uh, firearms. Again, probably don't want to have weapons of uh, mass destruction. Oh, look at that word. I'll probably get uh, side blocked by YouTube about that in the hands of uh, people who want to create more harm than good, or at least to defend themselves. Anyway, uh, Buttigieg tried to make that point, wasn't able to really convene anything, get to most likely won't do very well as well in South Carolina. Will it translate enough to all the other states in Super Tuesday um, and all the other Super Tuesday states in the next three weeks. People forget that it's not only just March 3rd, but it's also March 10th and March 17th that there are a, wow, what a, a huge number of states voting on those days. Although 17th only has like about four states, though they are quite, you know, population-wise, I believe. Illinois, Missouri, and can't think of the other two uh, on the top of my head. But basically, what is important is those next three weeks. And I think they call it the Isles of March for a reason there. So basically, um, they um, Biden, he was fine. He, he did what he could. At least he was a little bit more focused. Though he never really got really much more of the imagination of trying to relate himself with Obama. Interesting that everyone uh, wanted to praise Obama, wanted nothing to do with Obama, or at least wanted everything to do with Obama to encourage the African-American electorate uh, to uh, to vote for them, for them. And then when Bernie brought up Obama about the whole Cuban uh, policies and trying to improve literacy, because that's important in our world, we want people to learn how to read and write. Of course, about what ideals they should basically uh, attack them on the ideals that they were teaching them how to read and re read and write about. Of course, not enough data can really profess with that, unless of course you know you really get uh, much more relations with people in Cuba, uh, or at least people that used to live in Cuba now live in South uh, South Florida region, um, seeing what they were trying to teach them. And it would be something interesting if they brought that up, and uh, hopefully in the next few weeks, especially with Florida being one of those uh, uh, states on, I believe. Oh, yeah, that was the other one, Florida, being on March 17th. Uh, we'll definitely see how that basically improves on that. Uh, anyway, they, and they, they're like, oh, yeah, it's Obama. But then, of course, when he mentioned Obama, uh, Bernie mentions Obama. It's like, you can't say his name. You can't bring him in. It's like, and then they try to pin the whole primary in Obama in 2012 uh, from Bernie. And it's like, oh, yeah, Harry Reid had to stop him from that. It's like, but he says, that's basically, that's not true. And uh, I'm kind of disappointed he didn't because I would have really enjoyed seeing a primary. I'm a, I'm a sucker for primaries. I'm sorry. I know he uh, Obama was an incumbent and it's like but still it's it's democracy. It's to improve. I would have been really encouraged back then. In 2012 I was really going through a lot of uh things that I may I may have mentioned in all the other previous videos I had uh with my depression and basically uh with my angerism and I would have liked that type of voice really giving me some hope. And, you know, it's like for a better democracy. And at least Obama's kind of just privately talking with uh, uh, Bernie and trying to let him know that, yeah, don't inalienate people. Just keep on track with some uh, stuff. Keep being enthusiastic for everyone. And I do appreciate that. Um, but, of course, he's his own man. 
And this is really the first time Bernie was actually labeled as really the front runner in the race with that huge delegate gap and all the popular votes as well. Please don't disrespect the process, guys. As like, ah, uh, and he handled it very well, consistent again. And uh, people try to give him a lot of drawback and try to really smear him. And he basically corrected them, and or at least in the sense of uh, uh, admitting that he had faults in his past and he'll keep on improving. And, uh, you know, because this is not only just about him, it's about everyone else getting uh, participating in the political process and he needs everybody else because that's what democracy is again. Now, I said the last debate was like very intense and harsh and it's like, but yeah, that's what democracy is about. But in this debate, oh, sweet Christ, they were just not really that was way too much. Especially people just speaking over each other, not really properly getting to them. Though, um, and even Bernie was kind of guilty of that as well. Though he did actually wanted to reassure uh, Tom Steyer or uh, to the moderators like Gail or Nora. It's like, yeah, that was my time. Okay, now it's my time. All right, no, uh, uh, up here. Uh, and then just always being yelled. It's like, yeah, of course they're yelling because, you know, they got to get their words in or they got to make the most impactful motion for the internet to be wild about. Again, that's also up to the moderators. God damn it, please cut the mics. Again, cut the mics if they're not following the rules. I swear to God, it's like, um, give them at least, oh yeah, they have to go like five minutes without them speaking. That's the penalty. They, they got to have penalties in this. Because uh, it's like just them saying, yeah, you got to honor the rules. It's like, yeah, this high type of atmosphere and this circumstances, eh, it's like that's not really going to cut it. Sorry, uh, but CBS, uh, I guess they were being too polite on that scale. Yeah, they were kind of being too polite there and not enough to say to them that, yeah, guys, we got, you know, like orderly. Although having theme only debates is uh, quite something to do as well. You know, like, oh, yeah, having a gun related uh, debates or just gun uh, prevention or pre preventable gun violence debate theme or climate change theme or uh and basically every other aspect of our lives um just a theme but i guess i guess the dnc doesn't really want to do that there was actually you know those whole plans about having a climate change only debate um uh, but they were voted down by like these super delegates in the whole dnc process and i was like it was just basically rude yeah, who gets uh, that sweet dollar from all those fossil fuel companies? I say that as a state delegate. Now, I don't get uh, any say in the national uh, party, but in the state party, I have a, a good amount of a say in it. Not fantastic. Anyway, they mentioned, they finally mentioned the Conora virus, which apparently it's a very uh, huge deal around basically around the world and of course Bernie relaying that to climate change because that could definitely affect of how uh, diseases can definitely progress around people and especially for people that don't have as much access to medicine proper medicine to third world countries that could uh, uh, hurt everyone else around the world that's why we have to work together with uh, le leaders around the world to combat this uh, crisis and of course you know basically everything around there is like People will definitely just keep on saying, oh, he only, only wants to talk about climate change. Climate change is important. You know, it's like that's going to kill us all. I don't see. And again, people will try to be, well, you're going to sacrifice our jobs. It's not a very good job if it's going to kill you in the end. And you're going to have to pay up all those medical bills. Anyway, before I go on that tide rant, uh, down the ballot issues, by the way, they mentioned that they didn't mention names. I was disappointed they didn't mention Jamie Harrison running for that United States Senate seat down in South Carolina. They didn't mention uh, every other uh, United States Senate or United States House of Representatives, even. not even Joe Cunningham, who was quite vocal about against Bernie Sanders. Like, I don't want a socialist on my on my ballot when I have to run here is because I have to answer to that. Not really have a lot of uh, encouragement there huh i did help him out a little bit in that race and i'm kind of disappointed he just he just basically uses that language he was just say i just don't dis i just don't like his uh policies that's basically what he could have just said i don't like his policies his policies might actually hurt our people here don't just go off the labeling uh aspects 
Anyway, so um, everything's just really been all around, and I hope they can at least improve their debates uh, whenever they announce them the next time. And, uh, you know, it would be interesting if they mentioned, like, maybe Audrey Denny, who's running in the congressional seat that's just uh, close by here uh, as a congressional seat against an incumbent that doesn't really want to be a representative to the people of the North State of California. Again, would have been helpful. But I guess, you know, there's a lot of time. Uh, you have to do a lot in so much in two hours, even less than that, because they have to do all these commercial breaks, which also had Michael Bloomsburg ads and Top Steyer ads. Again, respect it, dude, which I will now reveal in my rank choice voting. Uh, basically about uh, eight major candidates. Uh, oh, yeah. Overall, uh, I want to say... D plus, D plus. You know, that last question was actually very important about their whole, uh, what's their misconception and their um, attitude or, or like what's their motto and their whole, uh, their philosophy and how they would lead a country. And everyone has spectacular answers, except for probably Bloomsburg. He didn't exactly mention the motto that he followed. Uh, just a misconception that only Drumpf seems to ma uh, make about his height. I was like, that's it? That's all you got? I guess you can probably guess where he's going to land in my ranked choice voting. But, of course, uh, Gail King was all right. I hope, uh, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant, but it was kind of right for her to actually bring up the whole points about, oh, yeah, but he was charged with, uh, with rape and he was accused of that and that, okay, can we just make sure that he was, uh, yes, we celebrate his life, but, you know, there are things that he had with him. He had faults and that's what makes them human. So either way, it's basically a whole essence of just... Uh, really being much more proud of yourself or being much more accountable to yourself because you're only human. And Gail King had basically all the right, uh, had uh, the rights to say, to question that, to, qu to criticize that part. And at least, you know, then she went to being positive about his family. So I respect Gail King for being the best reporter she can be. Moderator, probably not. She was all right. But nothing much more that I needed uh, to really have a con uh, constructive and much more accountable uh, uh, show. So C minus, C minus. That's my, that's my grade. Uh, so ranking choice. I'll try to see if I can go this uh, longer. Uh, eight. Michael Bloomsburg can't. Not gonna really do much. He has a lot of money. He probably doesn't need my help. He probably bought basically most of that uh, debate stage that was basically booing or cheering him on and trying to make him look good. And um, because, you know, it's like apparently from what people or at least sources are telling me is like, though, you know, when you have to go in those debate stages, you kind of have to pay a lot of money for that. And uh, seven, that would be Joe Biden. Uh, yeah, still kind of just like yeah, not being really uh, helpful, not being really, uh, he keeps keep using the words of progressive, you gotta actually get things done, it's like, but what type of things are being done to lift uplift people, and yes, I get it, uh, you just don't want to do it because it costs too much, or, you know, it's like, you have to face these challenges, you're gonna have to face those challenges too, also, please mention down the ballot candidates as well, and he doesn't seem to be really interested in helping others out, except basically placing everything that he's got and his credibility in South Carolina for his votes. And that's slipping now. And especially with him lying and lying and kind of exaggerating stories about himself to try to make himself look like so legit for civil rights. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, six, that would be Amy Klobuchar. She's really fallen. She's not been able to really connect with people like me or uh, people, uh, racial, uh, different kinds of uh, people that just seems that she seems to be tone deaf with it and her basically her primary uh, concern is basically going to midwestern states which isn't bad uh, such as north and south dakota and every other states because you want to make at least appearances there but unfortunately that kind of gives a reason why you're kind of going only to those states favoritism but of course minnesota is growing in diversity and it become and basically a purple state so uh we'll definitely see how she definitely does in her state to basically justify her running uh number five tulsi gabbard 
still is a quite quantifiable candidate that just really knows what she's doing with herself to try to bring accountability and try to bring people together, peace and love. But unfortunately, you know, hasn't really progressed herself pretty much more outside the demographic that she's basically her best supporters are at. We kind of know what those type of supporters are. And I guess that's not going to last you that long until after basically maybe Super Tuesday. March 3rd. And so, um, number four, that would be Tom Steyer. No, actually, wait. Um, I think I made, oh, Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg was six. Um, that had Amy Klobuchar from number five for me. Still top five. Oh, yeah, slipped. Pete Buttigieg, again, uh, six. He would be basically just not very encouraging. Again, I don't know what his basically his main purpose is. I, Basically, is he hoping to see if Indiana really becomes much more hype because, you know, someone running from Mike Pence uh, district, will be, uh, that's the most dude that needs to get out. Mike Pence, please get rid of that LGBT hating motherfucker there that just doesn't respect them. And, you know, that would kind of be really quite angry for Pete to actually see what he can do in Indiana and maybe surrounding those states as well, like Ohio and Michigan. Uh, seeing what he could do there. That would be five. Mamie, Mariola, again, slipping, but hopefully she can much ma- massively improve her four stake in the Midwestern states. Fourth would be Tulsi Gabbard. You have to realign that there. Um, uh, third, Tom Steyer, again, really, again, saying that, yes, that he should have been impeached, but he was impeached. Trump was impeached. He will always have that label on him. He just won't be convicted and he won't be removed from office because he did those things that are quite terrible to the Constitution. But, you know, there's enablers. Again, please, somebody uh, support those down the ballot uh, candidates. Keep mentioning them, but you're not mentioning their names. Anybody who's running. I guess it's because there are a lot of competitive primaries that they don't want to expose themselves to. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Tom Steyer had a significantly well done and basically going to compete very well in uh, South Carolina, uh, should the voters say to him. I think that's basically his main stake is that he performs very well in South Carolina to keep continuing throughout uh, the process, uh, throughout this primary. Elizabeth Warren, number two, still very adequated, very uh, formidable, very just high-spirited like Asana, and just really uh, quite composed with herself uh, in the face of basically questioning the bigotry and basically uh, the the greed of of Wall Street. And that's basically her specialty. Again, Secretary of Treasury doesn't sound too bad because, of course, number one choice, and of course, who I voted for in the primary. I already put my ballot in in the mail. Bernie Sanders. Of course, consistency. People just trying to thrash him. He's able to uh, answer with as much authenticity and everything determination uh, that is possible. And yeah, both Elizabeth and Bernie are basically, you know, they have endorsed candidates down the ballot, like Jessica Cesariano is running that one Texas congressional district in uh, against Henry Kavar, uh, basically trying to be much more. Marie Newman from Illinois is trying to take on Dan Levitsky, uh, and so much more uh, people, especially Warren basically endorsing a governor in, running, for, or at least a candidate running for the governor of West Virginia, uh, Stephen Smith, if I'm not mistaken. And just that cool that's wonderful keep that going i hope definitely uh it really makes uh, all the best difference out there in the world uh it's just again if when they do these debates again i hope they definitely improve on them maybe have some rules about hey you going over to time limit don't talk or at least don't talk over everyone else don't try to violate those rules please be a little bit more civil i get it it's democracy Again, civility. We want to be better than Trump. And uh, just be a lot more accountable. Uh, anyway, so looking forward to what happens here and there. Now, of course, uh, next time we'll be reviewing some kind of debate. Hopefully everything else turns out pretty well. Um probably be a little bit more uh something much more uh, of lifestyles while we see what happens with all these elections without debate so this has been uh, progressive alternative with victor monharis i'm victor monharis and you have a very swell uh year 
anything partaking in your lifestyles. Keep it cool, guys. Nailed it.